Colonel Robert Cortez, retired United States Army uh, Reserves. Uh, so you just said just now you're still shaking. You're jittery. Why? Yes, it's still uh, a little bit shook up about it. I'm, you know, a very emotional state. The one we we did get Bin Laden, but apprehensive because of retaliation uh, from uh, the terrorists that are still exist and concerned because of our domestic terrorism threat that we've had so many homegrown terrorist attempts, you know, in the last couple of years, and that's the threat within, and it's just as big on their vet and their views and uh, the, of the terrorism and why they don't like America, and yet they're here. Uh, it, it's tough, and that's my concern is you know, the domestic threat as well. So. Now, you were a witness to the actual attack on the Pentagon. You were in there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we had just uh, we were in a meeting for the Armed Forces Reserve Policy Committee meeting for budget planning for the next year, and the, they interrupted the meeting. Told the general in charge that there was something going on at the trade centers, and he said, "Well, let's turn on the TV, see what's going on." And it hadn't been ten minutes into it, and we reconvened the meeting after the second plane hit. And we, the general said, "Well, let's get back to our meeting." It probably was like ten, fifteen minutes right after we reconvened our meeting when I heard like a train coming down the hallway and just a big explosion and the tile, ceiling tiles fell in and the doors blew open and then they just gave verbal command to evacuate. And at the time I just thought it was, you know, construction going on at the Pentagon. I just thought maybe it might have been a construction accident or explosion. Once we got outside the building, we saw the smoke. And then the security, we were helped. I got involved helping Lieutenant Colonel Brian Berto, who was severely injured and his medic asked for assistance, so I was helping them when the security said we had to move about a quarter mile down the road because another plane was coming. That's when I realized the plane had attacked, hit the building and caused all the damage. So uh, we did move him down the road and we finally were able to flag down a per POV, the ambulance never showed up to that side of the building, put him in a personal POV and SUV vehicle and they took him to Georgetown. Fortunately for him, he's the only burn survivor that was taken to Georgetown. He had the ultimate attention of the burn specialist in the nation that was there. And that's, uh, Colonel Birdwell has put that in his book. It's, he did survive. And you heard that the plane, you, you saw a second plane was coming. Well, I was helping with the in, individual that was injured, but the terror in people's eyes, hiding, ducking for cover, looking at the sky and, and just the fear. And it kind of reminded me uh, when you see the pictures of the Knowles and K President Kennedy got shot. That was the fear in people's eyes, ducking for cover under the bridges everywhere, because the Pentagon just the side of Arlington. And they got under the tunnel there and, and just the fear in people's eyes was a very emotional day for us to see that attack in our own country. It's so emotional for you. Yes, ma'am. It, it, when you think back to that time, yes. yes. And then Osama bin Laden, the one who ordered these attacks. Yes, ma'am. Was he killed? Yes. Yes, it's a, a joyous time, but fearful time of the retaliation that might happen. Uh, we did say we got the, the leader, uh, but then there's so many others that will follow that are in the terrorist mode that are, you know, avowed to, to put the United States under, so that's still a big threat for us, and we still have to remain vigilant. Um, I think the day today brings back all the victims of 9-11 that, you know, uh, both at the World Trade Center, Shakespeare, Pennsylvania, and at the Pentagon, but also our soldiers uh, that have made the ultimate sacrifice and have been wounded, all our wounded warriors, as a result of our uh, global war on terrorism, uh, and that continues today. And it makes me proud uh, that our, our soldiers, our men and women, are still serving and in a volunteer force that they're willing to, to serve our country. You see all these wounded warriors that they're dying to get back into the fight and they want to get back into the fight. So that's the kind of soldiers we have today and that I was proud to serve with at the Pentagon. Uh, and we've lost so many in the global war on terrorism. So my heart goes out, the heartfelt to the Gold Star mothers who lost sons, daughters, husbands, brothers, uh, because of this global war on terrorism. So my heart goes out to them because I know this is not 
go away for them or for any of the victims from 9-11. The pain is still there. Yes, it's a bittersweet yeah. moment. Yes, it is. It's very, to me, it's emotional. It goes high and low, and you know, it's it's good emotion that we got Bin Laden, but uh, uh, you know, emotional that we've lost so many soldiers and, and family and the victims of 9/11 as well. We will not forget. So. Anything else you want to add? And when you first heard the news, what can you remember and recall the exact emotion that came over you when you first heard it at 4 a.m. this morning? Uh, well, no, my daughter called me, my daughter called me last night and said, Dad, they got Bin Laden, I, and I just said, what? I wasn't watching, uh, I was watching a movie, I wasn't watching regular TV, so I changed it right away to the news, and I was just in utter shock. And then friends and family, you know, uh, some of my friends that served with me called to see if I'd heard the news, and we all got to talking, family called, and wanted to know if I was okay. And I said, yeah, I'm happy and sad, but yes, I was okay. But uh, very shocking, uh, elation and shock too. So I was still pretty stunned. Even now, setting up, it just uh, it's a pretty emotional time. But uh, we got them. So. Anything else you want to add, Colonel? Uh, no, just remember to be vigilant and uh, be vigilant of your surroundings and and wherever you travel and. Yes, I think that's a great possibility, the retaliation and the terrorism. I mean, we got the head leader. Somebody else is going to take his place, so we got to be vigilant. We have to stay vigilant and in the United States and elsewhere. So. And there's a, that blur is supposed to be the plane. There's a blur com coming in in here. So. And then you see the explosion into the building. This is uh, Colonel Birdwell. And he came and spoke that day because he's all bandaged up. This is the morning of 9-11. Now, this is the morning when they were going to go, yeah, yeah, it's the 12th, when they were going to go search for bodies oh. and look for bodies. Where were you? I was taking the picture. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, oh, in the building? In the building? You were not in the building? Or yes, I was. Let me shot? show you. It, there's a picture there. There's another one that I can show you. This is a little bit better. I was about 300, that's the back side. Okay, here it is. The plane came in at corridor four, five, and I was right here, in the, my office is right by this tree. I was around the corner over here in a meeting where I told you, mm -hmm. but I was close enough that the shockwave was felt. People on the other side of the building just felt like a dumpster hit the ground or something. But you know, like I said, I had the shockwave and all the Wait. doors blew open. See, see, see. All this burnt. I, I wasn't able to go back to the office. Uh, I left two, two years later, and they were barely sheetrocking that, that office building again. So, so they told you to evacuate? And yeah, when we evacuated, I came, I was on the far, the river side. I was over here on this side is where we ended up evacuating too. But it seemed like it took like 45 minutes to get out. Bigger's memories is fire departments going by, you know, planes, loud noise planes. Just sometimes triggers uh, memories of 9 11. Just something that you gotta live with. Mm. You're shaking me. Yeah. <laughs> it gets, gets me nervous. So, you know, because that, that, those sights and sounds always bring back the day of the attack. You know, mm -hmm. just, yes. So. Is it hard for you to look at these pictures? Mm, no. Uh, I was glad I was able to uh, save these. Uh, it's just part of history now, and that I was there. Uh, met, met, I met her. She worked in the reserve command as well, so I got to meet a few of these people uh, as well. So, here's the, oh. here's the slate. And the general signed it for me when I left, and they put my dates of service. 2001 and 2003. What does this slate mean to you? Uh, it's the original building uh, that was built. Coincidentally, the Pentagon was started construction September 11th, 1941. So, and this is a piece of history here that they presented me after my service at the Pentagon. And uh, it's 
it's charred and it's heavy. And what the, the roofers union did is to repair the Pentagon under Project Phoenix to restore it within a year, get it all you know, back to normal from the outside. It took a couple of years to do the inside. They donated all the new slate for the material for the reconstruction of the Pentagon. So pretty awesome. Let's see. Had it gone to A ring, which is the middle, that's where the cafeteria and all that stuff is. Had they not, you know, hit it by target by choice, mm -hmm. they didn't plan on it. The opposite side of the building is all the leadership of the Pentagon. All the, you know, rum. When do you see that? Well, we've been looking for him for quite a while, so uh, that's pretty emotional because I'm, you know, he's the guy we've been after. And justice has been done, yes. Did you believe it when you first heard it? It was hard to believe. Uh, but once it was confirmed, and this morning the, they said they got the DNA, everything's been confirmed, and they buried him at sea, it's, yeah, it's, it's final. So. But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's, he's a homegrown the Mexican that they have ties to uh, Al-Qaeda. And that's what's scary, is guys like that. <laughs> or even wannabe. Oh, well, yeah. 